What we're going to look at in this video is we're going to look at two variations of writing the equations of a plane called parametric and vector equations of a plane. So these are two alternative methods and alternative ways we can describe a plane in three-dimensional space using the properties we have. Now, before we do that, there is one thing we have to make sure we have our heads 100% clear on, and that's a concept called coplanar vectors. Now let's imagine we've got two vectors. First vectors A represent the position vector from O to A. Second vectors B represent the position vector from O to B. Now both of these are non-zero and non-parallel. So two non-zero non-parallel vectors, that defines a plane that they're on, which we're going to call AOB. Now if we let C be represented by a line segment on this plane, so to some generic point C, position vector C will be represented by a line segment on this plane, then A, B, and C are said to be coplanar. So what this means is if we've got three vectors, A, B, and C, there are two numbers that exist, let's call them T and U, such that C is some combination of T, A, plus U, B. So some combination of a multiple of A plus a multiple of B. All three vectors then are coplanar. Or conversely, we can say that if all three vectors are coplanar, then these two real numbers exist such that C is equal to t times a plus u times b. Basic premise of it is, if we've got two vectors, let's say there's our a and there's our b, on a plane, what we're going to do is pick some point here, let's call that c, and have a position vector on the plane called c. What that means is this position vector here can be described as some combination of our two vectors a and b, but it can be multiples thereof. So it can be some combination of t times a and u times b. So it could be some scalar combination thereof. So any position vector upon that plane can be described in that fashion. So we have to be aware of that, because that then helps us to look at the definitions we're going to be talking about. First of which is what's called the vector equation of a plane. Now, if we let A be some known point on a plane, and B and C be any two non-parallel vectors that lie upon that same plane, so let's imagine we've got our plane here. There's my point A, and I'm going to have two vectors. Let's say there's my vector B, and there's my vector C. They're non-parallel. Apologies for the really fun drawing. What we're going to say is we're going to then let R be any generic point <coughs> somewhere on the plane. So we know A, B, and C. So we know the point A, we know the vector B, and we know the vector C. What we're going to do is define some generic point R at X, Y, Z on the plane. So obviously this can describe any point anywhere upon that plane. So what, mean, what that means is we can define a vector from A to R, which we're going to call AR, and then that means that this AR, this B, and this C are all coplanar, and there is some set of real numbers, T and U, such that this vector A to R can be represented by T times B plus U times C, similar to exactly what we just said a second ago about coplanar vectors. So that vector A to R can be represented by some scalar combination of our vectors B and our C. Now, remember, position vector from A to R, what that means is that we do r minus a, so position vector from the origin to r, plus position vector to a, and we know then that r minus a is equal to tb plus uc. So we can rearrange that, and we know position vector r to any point upon our plane is given by a plus tb plus uc. So it's some combination of all three of those vectors on the plane. So what we can say is that if for some vector r we can find the values of t and u to satisfy this equation, then r is that position vector of a point t, sorry, of a point r on the plane. Now this variation of the equation is known as the vector equation of the plane, and t and u are referred to the parameters of the plane. So it's similar to when we did parametric differentiation, and we had x and y given in terms of our component t. So given in terms of another variable. 
what x and y were depended upon this third variable and the values we chose for it. This is the same sort of idea, except this time we've got two variables, t and u, so two scalar values, and point r, and then the position vector thereof of r on the plane depends upon those two vector, those two parameters themselves. Now a key thing to remember about this is the form of the equation depends upon our initial choice of vectors. So if we choose different vectors, we will get different equations that can represent the same plane. So if you imagine, for example, if I've got three points A, B and C, and I choose my vectors to be A, B and A, C, that would give me a different equation than if I chose vectors B, A and B, C, which would then give me a different equation to if I chose C, B to C, A. All right? But they would all still represent the same plane. We're just essentially looking at it from a slightly different perspective. So bear that in mind. If you do a question and you get an answer and it's slightly different, just double check it because your answer may be correct. It's just taken with respect to a different point and a different set of vectors that you've chosen on the plane. Now that's the vector equation of our plane. What we can do is actually take this and expand it and look at each component on its own to give us a slightly different variation of that. So let's imagine we take our position vector r to be our x, y, z, and a, b, and c to be the a1, a2, a3, b1, b2, b3, and c1, c2, c3 that we've used previously. If we then combine it using that form that we had a second ago, what we can say is that r, which is our x, y, z, is given by this vector here. So our x components, a1 plus t, b1 plus u, c1, our y is a2 plus tb2 plus uc2, and our z is a3 plus tb3 plus uc3. Now if we list each of these distinct components, so our xr component, our yr component, our zr component, what we've got is each single component of our vector written in terms of the components of the other vectors and the parameters themselves. Now we may also write this in terms of our ijk vector in this format here. Now this is the position vector of a point on the plane and it's determined by the parametric values t and u. So this is what's referred to as the parametric equation of the plane. Now as we run through the various values of t and u, what we'll find is we will always find the position vector of a point p on the plane and it will change obviously dependent upon the values of t and u that we pick to use in the equation here. So there's two different variations of what we could use for the equation of a plane in two different ways of writing it. I'm going to show you an example of this and an example of how we can use T and U, but it's actually not quite as difficult as you'd expect. So let's imagine I want to find the equation of a plane first in vector form, then in parametric form, containing the points D, E and F here. And then I want to find the point on the plane which corresponds to the value T equals 2 and U equals 3. So first thing I'm going to do is define my three position vectors, d, e, and f. So I know that d is going to be 1, 2, negative 1. And I'm a position vector e. It's going to be negative 2, 3, 2. And my position vector for f is going to be given by 4, 5, 6. So what I'm going to do now is define two vectors on the plane. Now let's imagine I've got my points d, e, and f on the plane. The vectors I'm going to define are d to e and d to f. Now if you were to do this to go e to d and e to f or f to e and f to d again you would get different vectors obviously for those and your ultimate equation of the plane would be slightly different from the format I've done because you've chosen different vectors to represent it but it would still be correct. So what I'm going to do is as I've said I'm going to use the vectors d to e and d to f. So d to e, we know is the position vector e, take away the d, so it's going to be negative 2, 3, 2, take away the d, which is 1, 2, negative 1. So in this case, what I'm going to end up with is negative 3, 1, 3. So that's my vector d to e. Similarly, for my d to f, this time though it's going to be f, take away the d, so that's going to be the 4, 5, 6, take away the d position vector again, which is 1, 2, negative 1. So in this case, what that gives me is 3, 
3 and 7 for that vector there. So I've now got my two vectors that I'm after there. So what I now know is that the position vector of any vector on the plane is given by a combination of the three vectors. So A plus TB plus UC. Now, we've got to determine which of the vectors we pick. Now, the two with the scale of values, it doesn't matter which of these two vectors I set that up as. The point we pick for A is the point at which the two vectors originate. So for this one, if I was to want to write it in my format of A plus TB plus UC, the B and the C are these two vectors here. Again, it doesn't matter which order they're in. And the A is represented by the position vector D of the point at D, because that's where both of the vectors originate. So what I'd be able to say is, fine, so my position vector for R is given by 1, 2, negative 1, plus T. Now I'm going to go with D to E here, times negative 3, 1, 3, and then plus U times 3, 3, 7. So there you go. That there is my vector equation of the plane. Now I want the parametric form as well. Well, all I need to do for the parametric form is put all this together as a single vector where the x, y, z components are described on their own, and then I can list each of the components singularly. So what I can do for that one is say, fine, so my r is given by 1 minus 3t plus 3u. My y is given by 2 plus t plus the u and then the z component is given by negative 1 plus 3t plus 7u. I could then list that as each component on its own so I could say fine so that means xr is given by 1 minus 3t plus the u my yr is given by 2 plus t plus the u and my zr is given by negative 1 plus 3t plus 7u. So there you go, parametric form there. Shows each of the components on their own depend upon t and u. Now in this question I'm giving you a value of t and a value of u to use so what I'm going to do is substitute them in here and use them in order to get the specific point upon the plane that we're after. So what I'm simply going to say is that R then equals, put T and U into here, so I've got 1 minus 3 times 2, so 3T, plus the U, so plus 3 times 3, the second one is 2, plus T, so 2 plus 2, plus 3 times 3, and the Y component is negative 1, plus 3 times 2, plus 7 times 3. Then it's just a case of working it through. I've got 1 minus 6 plus 9. What that then gives me is 4. I've then got 2 plus 2, which is 4, plus 9. So that then gives me 13. I've then got negative 1 plus 6, which gives me 5, plus 21. So I've then got 26 there. So what that means then is the point on the plane R is at 4, 13, 26. And that's with reference to this T and this U. If I were to change the values of T and U, what I'd find is I'd get a different point R upon the plane. So we've just defined it in terms of these parameters, T and U, in both formats. And like I say, pick whatever parameters we're given or we need, we're able to find any point upon the plane because we've defined the entire three-dimensional surface using this. So this is just another way of defining the equation of a plane that comes in handy with a lot of the work that we're going to do and a lot of the material that we'll cover later on in the course, particularly when it comes to some of the more complex calculations.